The message for today is entitled, I Have a New Loving Heart. While I was preparing this, I was saying to God, Lord, this is a hard teaching. I said, Lord, wow, this is the truth. And we as Christians, we should be able to grasp this because it will really bring us to that level of our Christian life that will forcefully advance his kingdom, that will forcefully advance his church, even to the gates of hell. So let me just read that text again in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 21. If we will just scan it, okay? A new loving heart. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 21. We'll just run through it very quick. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Again, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loves us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And you will see there again and again, the text would always say, we ought to love one another. We are to love God and love one another. This letter of John was written to encourage believers to live out our relationship with God and that it should be expressed in a tangible way by loving others. This letter was also written to warn the believers during that time from false teachers separating salvation from matters of life such as loving each other. So the letter, John was telling to the believers, hey, you cannot separate salvation from loving. When we talk about being saved, we talk about God's love. Okay? Why would God want us to have a new and loving heart? Why would God want, want us to have a new and loving heart. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 9 to 13. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open it. Okay. Can we go to that slide, please? It says here, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. God knows that in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. But specifically, Jesus was talking to his disciples here. He was talking to them, Hey, disciples, in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. And I believe God is speaking to us even today that He is warning us. Take note that Jesus was talking to His disciples. And He wants to talk to us even now. Jesus was warning His disciples and at the same time, I believe Jesus was equipping and strengthening them by having one of the greatest weapons of His kingdom, which is love. Love for each other. In John 13, verse 34 to 35, it says, A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the church is not moving forward. Because we have not been using God's greatest weapon, and that is loving each other. The kingdom of God is not moving in a way today that is forcefully advancing His gospel. Because we have forgotten one of the greatest weapons that we can ever have, and that is His love. 1 John 4.9, this is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son in the world that we might live through Him. It says also in John chapter 13, verse 34, it says, Everyone will know that you are my disciples. The world will know 
if we love each other. Can you imagine that weapon? It talks about not loving others outside, but it talks about us loving each other. And that is the greatest weapon that God is giving us. Genuine love received, genuine love will be released. Do you believe that? As we get that love from God, we ought to love one another. Genuine love received, genuine love will be released. As we receive that love, it will also go out of us. Not just a love with so much emotions, not love that with so much pretension, but it will be a genuine love coming out of all of us. I am a physical therapist also, and I felt like I needed to show some facts about the heart. Okay? Let me give you the first one. Facts about the heart. The average adult heart beats 72 times a minute. That is 100 times a day. That is 3,600,000 times a year and 2.5 billion times during a lifetime. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a heart like that? And I believe God wants us to take care of that heart. Can you imagine if that heart stops beating? Imagine po natin how, how, how our heart is working so hard. Okay? Number two, though weighing only 11 ounces, gano lang po ba ka, kabigat yon? Makita nyo po yung dede ng bata. Okay? Parang ganun lang. Ganun lang. And they say, is it the right hand or the left hand? I think it's the left hand. Can, 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 you, can, can you make a fist? Your, your, your heart, your human heart, the anatomy, anatomy of the heart is just like this. Okay? And it is tilted to the left. Okay? That is our heart. Number three, every day the heart creates enough energy to drive a truck 20 miles. Can you imagine that? In a lifetime, that is equivalent to driving to the moon and back. Wow. Our heart is so powerful. Okay? Can you tell your, your, your church mate, your heart is so powerful. And another fact about the human heart, the heart does the most physical work of any muscle during a lifetime. The power output of the heart ranges from 1 to 5 watts. Okay? Sometimes we have uh, lights in our houses that is up to 7 watts. While the quadriceps, this is the quadriceps, the muscle in front, if you can see, okay, can produce 100 watts for a few minutes and, and an output of 1 watt for 80 years is equal to 2.5 gigajoules. I don't know what gigajoules means, but it just means it's powerful, that our heart is full of so much energy and it has its own electrical system inside of it. That is the human heart. That is the physical heart. But what more are physical hearts? Can you imagine how powerful it is if we only know how to use it? Can you imagine how would it change the world if we know how to use it? Can we imagine how would it impact, how would it impact someone if we know how to use it? We are just seeing the physical heart but if we see the spiritual heart in us, we would be able to, to know it and use it and to change our nation and to bring transformation. Amen? It says in Jeremiah, or rather Ezekiel 36 verse 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. God's going to give us a new heart and put a new spirit in us. God wants to deal with the issues of our hearts. That's why I said earlier, wow, this is a hard teaching. Lord, I don't know if we're going to accept this, but this is what God wants us to know for today. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? 
Even in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, keep your heart with all vigilance. It means guard your heart or let us guard our hearts for from it flow the springs of life. Do you know that in the Old Testament, whenever there is a war, whenever there is a battle, uh, one camp has a well, okay? Sa Tagalog po, anong well? Balon, okay? And that is a source of life. Because if the enemy captures it, they put poison in it, and the whole army will be dead soon. It is like that principle. But you know, brothers and sisters, this is the good thing. In Ezekiel, again, it says, it is God's promise for all of us. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. And that is in Jesus Christ, mga kapatid, we have a new and loving heart. Only in Jesus Christ that we can have a loving heart. The question is, are we using this new loving heart of ours? Are we using it to make a change or to make an impact to our community, to our church, to our nation, to our government, to wherever God is leading us? God has given us a new and loving heart already, and we are to use it and love brothers and sisters in Christ. Love is an action word. Okay? It is an action word. It needs to be seen. Do you also know that we can command by the grace of God our hearts? Do you believe that? That we can command our hearts. We can tell our hearts to beat again. We can tell our hearts to move the way it needs to move. We are not talking about here the physical heart, but we are talking about the spiritual heart here. I remember I was reading this, this book uh, by Dutch Sheets. There was a story that uh, I, I think, if I'm still correct, that tells there that I think his brother saw a surgery. It was a heart surgery. Okay? And then this surgeon, while doing the surgery, and you know when surgeons do surgery, there is a monitor there that monitors the, the, the beat of the heart. Okay? Uh, it, called, I, it is called, I don't know what it is called again, but I know it is the ECG, electrocardiogram. And you could hear it, when you see it, it goes like, toot, 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 goes up like that. And when the heart is not beating anymore, it goes to flat line. Toot, it goes like that, okay? So, this is a true story, by the way. When, when, uh, the heart of the one who was being uh, operated on stopped beating. You know, the doctor, the doctor did something. He went near the ear of the patient and said, hey, we need your help. We need your help. Make your heart beat. And you know, after that, when the doctor said that, the heart beat again. God wants our heart to beat again. Okay? Brothers and sisters, last year, 2014 was a tough year for me. Our church, it was a powerful church. Literally powerful church. We had some great minds. Politicians, the likes of Ramos, Salonga, Yasai, and a lot more. We have some inventors. We have some millionaires there. But you know, the sad thing, when I was writing this message, we forgot how to love. Our church got divided. We forgot how to love. And God was teaching me personally how to love in spite of. I felt I was abandoned, left behind. But, but His grace, He let my heart beat again. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we can command our hearts to beat. We can command our hearts to beat again. To beat again for His glory. To beat again for His love. 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us not allow our hearts to be deceived. Let us not forget to love one another. Let us not allow anything to hinder us from loving each other. Amen. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 11, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. Do not allow anything to hinder us from loving each other no matter what. There will be times that, that you wouldn't like to, to go to church. But you can allow your heart. You can command your heart. Heart, you need to go to church. And if you, you, you don't like your seatmate or your churchmate, no, you can command your heart to beat again. Amen? Can we do that? It says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the gift of love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Maingay lang tayo. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but no, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is one of the most essential gifts that God has given us. And not only that, when we receive that love, again, God is telling us to love one another. God has given us His love already, and we are expected to express and release that love to others. First and foremost, to our brethren, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes we release that love to unbelievers, but God is telling us here, we ought to release it first to our brothers and sisters. Hello. The question is, what then should be our response to His love? Number one, we are to show love to each other. 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, this is how God showed His love among us. He sent His Son and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. God didn't say, I love you, my son. I love you, Romel. I love you, whoever you are. He didn't just say that. He showed it. He showed it by giving His one and only Son, Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters in Christ, God is asking us to show our love. One that we receive, we are to express it. We all know the love language, right? We all know the five love language. Okay, let me recap that. We've been teaching this, the true love waits to a lot of us students for the past few weeks. Okay, number one love language is quality time. We spend time with each other. Sometimes we just need to listen to each other. Minsan kami mga pastor, we make that mistake to give advice right away. But you know, yung mga tao gusto lang pala nilang mapakinggan sila. That is quality time. Number two, words of affirmation. We just wanted to hear some words. Hey, good job, great job. Like that. Sometimes we don't hear it from our brothers and sisters in Christ. And sometimes we hear it outside of the body of Christ. Sometimes I believe God, would, Jesus was just saying, uh, the people of this world are more should than the people of light. Okay? Number three, receiving gifts. Alam ko, marami po dito sa atin, we always give gifts. And praise God for that, that we show gifts. We give gifts to each other. But again, we are to know the other love language. Okay? Number, number four is that um, acts of service. We give service to each other. Sometimes by just uh, cleaning up, taking up the chair, putting it in one place, we already give love to each other. Amen? I remember my mom, 
Uh, I would always tell her, Mom, I love you, I love you. But actually, she just wanted me to wash the dishes. Amen? Amen. 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 Si, si Ate did it done. Number five, you know, physical touch. But there's a warning. If it's a lady, don't just hug that lady. You're going to be in trouble. Okay? Physical touch by hugging someone, tapping that someone at his or her back. Okay? God wants us to show our love. It's not just saying, I love you, but it can't be seen. Right? We always say that our action speaks louder than our words. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are to show love to each other. Number two, we are to live in love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. And whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. Whoever lives in love, we ought to live in love. What do you mean by that, Pastor? To live in love is to carry the love of Jesus anywhere, anytime, all the time. To live in love is to learn from His love. Now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. We are to learn from love. This illustration was shared by Coach Hannah earlier this morning. And it, you can see the illustration there. There is water. This is not just the feeling of the Holy Spirit, but it is receiving love from God. God is love. So we ought to live in love. It should be a lifestyle for all of us. We live, we breathe, we walk, we move. Without love and without living that love, we are just like zombies in this world. Can you imagine a Christian zombie? Can you imagine that? We go to church, we do ministry, we just do the duties, but without love, nothing. God is seen. Love is completed and we have confidence to come to Him. Di po ba? Now about your love, okay? In 1 Thessalonians, we do not need to write to you for you yourselves have been taught by God. I believe God has been teaching us so much of His love already. But sometimes it gets stuck in us. It doesn't come out. Okay? And sometimes so much love, it should, it should bring us to that point that it should be contagious to others. That even if we don't speak, they could see our love being shown to others. And even that, do you know that some people get saved by just seeing us loving together, loving each other. You know, yung nakikita lang nila, wow, ang sarap naman sa bahay na yan. Pag pumasok ka sa bahay na yon, tapos nagmumura kung ano ang pinagsasabi, I don't want to go inside that house. Right? But when you get inside that house and you can sense the love of God, you would always remain in that house. Can you imagine that? Brothers and sisters, this is the weapon that God wants us to have. The last one, the number three, having a new loving heart, we are to love even when it hurts. Ouch. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. When we love, we take that risk to be hurt. People don't love in a true sense because of fear. Fear of being hurt again. We develop this mechanism of I am hurt. I'm not going to be hurt again. So we begin to stop loving each other and later the love dies. We don't want that to happen. So we need to continue to love in spite of even when it hurts. We don't deserve God's love, but He lavished it on us. When we say lavished, yung pong sobra-sobra, 
binuhos niya sa atin yung love na yon. We don't deserve it. Therefore, mga kapatid, when we have received it, we are to also lavish it to others. Yung sobra-sobrang pag-ibig. This is not the kind of a stupid love that you will still love someone even if that someone keeps on bothering you, disrespecting you. This is not that kind of love. It's a different kind of love. Yung hindi ka binobola, hindi ka niloloka, and you will still love. No, yung, yung hindi ka nagpapaloko. Loving someone is loving that person with all of our hearts because God has given us that love no matter what. Trust is another issue. But to love, we are called not to judge, but we are called to love. Amen? I have a, not a video, but an audio of knowing how to love even when it hurts. Okay? Let's listen to this. It is uh, entitled, The Bait of Satan. Just listen. It is only five minutes. Okay? And then gonna gonna share something else. Welcome to the Messenger International podcast. Messenger International, a ministry of John and Lisa Bevere, is passionate about imparting the fear of the Lord and inspiring freedom in your life. Visit messengerinternational.org for more information. I want to share with you some truths out of my book, The Bait of Satan. Fence is the bait of Satan to pull you, the believer, into his captivity. Now, this is confirmed by, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, where Paul says, those who are in opposition, those who are offended with one another, are taken captive by Satan to do his will. Most people who are offended don't even realize they're offended. You see, a hunter, in order to catch prey, has to lay a smart trap. If the trap is obvious, you're not going to catch it, catch a thing. Satan is no different. He's a very cunning and a shrewd, and he knows the way he can get you into his captivity. It's not going to be by a blatant, obvious traps. Satan uses very subtle things, and it's called a fence, and that's his bait. I've discovered the person who can hurt you the most is the person who is closest to you. Why? Because our expectation of them is higher. If we set expectations on people and they don't meet those expectations, they will offend us. We have the greatest opportunity to be hurt by a husband, a wife, a pastor, because our expectations are higher on them. Proverbs 18 verse 19 says, A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. Solomon is saying that a brother who is offended has built walls around his heart. The New Testament calls those, calls those walls, he calls them strongholds. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter third through the fifth verse says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're, fle but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are thought processes, and Paul goes on to describe this. They're thought processes that are contrary to the will of God. God's word is a reflection of his nature. God's nature is love. The love of God always seeks to give to give, to give. But an offended person builds walls around their hearts, and once those walls are built in their life, they're no longer seeking to give. Their now focus is to protect, protect, protect. So now mechanisms in their minds, in their thoughts, in their subconscious say, I've been hurt, and I'm not going to get hurt again. They develop these thought patterns or reasonings to protect themselves from getting hurt again. Remember, Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. Do you want to really enter into a fulfilled life? Release the life that God has in you. Offense is the breeding ground of deception. A person who's deceived really believes he's right when in reality he's wrong. Walls are built in their subconscious to seek protection, even at the expense of others. A betrayal, when I seek 
my own protection or my own benefit at the expense of one I have a relationship with. A betrayal is the ultimate abandonment of a relationship. And if a betrayal is not repented of, it will ultimately lead to hatred. Hatred means that we lack love. It, it literally, in the Greek, it means loveless. It is the void of having the love of God. Something all true believers desire to excel in is the love of God. It is the most powerful force in the whole universe. And I'm convinced that the church Jesus is coming back for is a church that is going to walk in exceptional, extravagant love. You may be only at the initial stage of offense. Some of you may have gone to the stage of betrayal, and some of you may even be at the stage of hatred. Wherever you repent, wherever you are, if you repent and ask God to forgive you and for God to re-enter that place of your life again, begin giving and loving. Begin praying for those who have hurt you. Because let me tell you something. If you breathe air, if you drink water, if you eat food, you will have the opportunity to be offended. But what you do with the offense will determine your future. Either you'll become bitter or you'll become stronger. And my prayer is that you will become stronger. Thank you for listening to this Life Transform. Amen. Praise God. Can we give a clap to the Lord? Come on. He deserves it. Don't withhold that clap from the Lord, okay, to the Lord. I remember uh, many times my, my, my heart got hurt, okay, and I remember this. Uh, uh, a co-worker went to the missions. We, we, we got hurt with each other, and then we talked. We asked for forgiveness with each other, but every time I would see the person, I would still get that cringe. You know that cringe? You, you don't want to see that person. And you know, one time, someone blessed me and gave me like uh, 40,000 pesos. And then told me, hey, buy this iPad. So I bought the iPad. And then after that, uh, I still got some, some few thousands left. And I was asking God, God, what do you want me to do with this? Okay, may sobra, may sobra. And suddenly, God told me, give that to the person. Okay, so I put it in an envelope and... Uh, gave it to that person, and that person thought it was a love letter. And early in the morning, okay, sh that person called me, and that person called and said, what did God tell you? So we talked, and you know what happened? Something from inside of me got pulled. And then right away, I knew that God was doing something in my new heart. And I, I love that person. Na, na mas, 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 mas mahal ko pa siya even before. You know, something got pulled. So God is telling us we are to give, give, give. Another one is that uh, I have a classmate, a pastor also. We had a real fight, like a real fight. It was an awful fight. And then God would tell me, give your bag to that person. Lord, not my North Face bag. Come on, Lord. And then when I gave it, he cried. Okay, I'm not saying that once you hurt someone or you got hurt, you, you just give it right away. We need to listen to God. Okay? And He wants to change our heart. God loves us so much that He gave His one and only Son. We ought to also give that love to others. Brothers and sisters in Christ, gusto ba natin masaktan sa mundong ito? Okay? Sabi po dun sa pinakinggan natin, habang naririto tayo sa mundong ito, masasaktan tayo. But it is how we respond. That is what matters most. We need to give love. Jesus was hurt many times. He was beaten. He was kicked. He was punched. His, his uh, beard was pulled. But He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Amen. Pastor, ang lungkot naman ang message mo. No? This is hard truth, brothers and sisters in Christ. Another one, Jesus said, love your enemies. How can we do that? You give a bag to your enemy. You give something to your enemy. Can you imagine that? Right? Brothers and sisters in Christ, God has already given us a new heart and a new spirit. 
we ought to love one another. Let us all rise. We're going to pray.